when is Ethereum 2.0 going to arrive? We've all heard about this new and improved version of Ethereum uh, that we've been waiting on for years, right? We've been promised this, so when is it going to arrive? I've seen all kinds of things advertised. There's the uh, inside joke that it's soon trademark. Some people say it's gonna be here in 2020. So what is the real truth? Why is this taking so long? Is Ethereum a scam? Have they run out of money? And are people just losing hope? Well, that's what we're talking about in this video. And I wanna offer you my perspective on this as a blockchain developer. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain developer. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And if you want real-time help to become a blockchain developer, my brand new program, Blockchain Mastery University, launches on January 29th, 2020. You can find a link down in the video description uh, to join the special launch event. So when is Ethereum 2.0 gonna get here, right? Is it gonna be here in 2020? Is it gonna be here in 10 years from now? Why is it taking so long? So let me explain. All right, if you're using Ethereum right now, if you're a holder, you're a trader, you're a miner, developer, whatever it is, uh, you're using Ethereum 1.0, all right? So what is Ethereum 2.0? It's a new and improved version of Ethereum, all right? It gets the blockchain ready for prime time, all right? This was Ethereum's big vision all along that they've talked about for years, okay? And Ethereum 1.0 is really uh, kind of a prototype, right? That, at least that's how I like to think about it. And I think that uh, Ethereum's founder, uh, Vitalik Buterin, would agree with me. And we're gonna see that here in a second, all right? They basically launched Ethereum 1.0 as an experiment, right? To see if they could, you know, write code and put it on the blockchain and create, you know, blockchain applications, decentralized applications that people would actually use. And don't get me wrong when I say experiment, right? Like, it's a very sophisticated project, but they had to release it in somewhat of an imperfect state uh, just to see if it would even work at all. And that's what Ethereum 1.0 is right now, and they've been hard at work on creating a new and improved version of this that gets Ethereum ready for prime time, and that's exactly what Ethereum 2.0 is. So Ethereum 2.0 is a much more sophisticated version, all right? And the biggest thing that it achieves, honestly, in my opinion, is scaling, all right? This basically makes Ethereum faster and handle a much bigger volume of users so that it can compete with other uh, traditional platforms like credit card companies, for example. It'd be like Visa, all right? And it does this by increasing the number of transactions that can take place at one time and also reduce the amount of time it takes for any one transaction to occur. So how does this work? Well, you don't really just flip a switch and make Ethereum 2.0 happen. Like some people think uh, mistakenly, they think that there's just like this central bottleneck that you have to improve in order to make Ethereum 2.0 happen and make it faster. That's not true. You don't just work on like one little piece to, of Ethereum to make this work. There's a lot of different things you have to work on to achieve the full benefit. There's lots of things like uh, sharding, plasma, and Casper. So what are those? Well, sharding is basically like breaking the network up into smaller blockchains uh, to reduce the computational load of the entire blockchain itself, all right? And then plasma is basically using a uh, other blockchains as side chains to process transactions so that you don't have to do everything on the main blockchain. And then lastly, Casper proof of stake uh, is changing Ethereum's consensus protocol uh, from proof of work, which supports mining to proof of stake, which supports staking. All right. And all this is going to roll out in phases, right? It's not all going to happen at one time. You don't just flip a switch and make Ethereum 2.0 happen. You work on each of these little pieces uh, individually, right? So uh, the beacon chain, which you can see right here, uh, is sort of the first item to be addressed, right? And then you just address all these other things uh, in sequence until you can roll out the main complete product and then you make the switch, okay? All these things have to happen incrementally, uh, but we could see the beacon chain, the very first thing, uh, arrive as soon as uh, Q1 2020, which is basically here. So in one sense, you know, Ethereum 2.0 is right upon us. We're starting to see uh, the beginnings of this roll out at the beginning of 2020. And this is that beacon chain that I just talked about. But what's the timeline for the entire thing, right, before we can like actually make the switch to transition to using all parts of Ethereum 2.0? Well, some people think it might not be for a few more years. At least that's the speculation here. And we don't have any official word from the Ethereum Foundation, but we do have this quote from Vitalik, uh, the co-founder of Ethereum, which I really like and thought was good, right? So uh, the headline here is Ethereum 2.0 is a marathon, not a race. And Vitalik said, uh, Ethereum 1.0 is a couple of people's scrappy attempt uh, to build the world computer. Ethereum 2.0 will actually be the world computer. 
So I think that's a really helpful way to look at it as a marathon, not a race, right? So the whole idea is that with Ethereum 2.0, they want to take the time to do this right and roll it out in a way that it can really be what it's supposed to be, like actually realize the vision and make way fewer compromises than were made in Ethereum 1.0 just to get it out there. So some people like ask, is Ethereum a scam? Well, here, I want to give you my perspective on this as a developer. Okay, so I don't think so. And here's why. They're working on something that's incredibly hard to accomplish. And just like I said, you know, I would rather them work really hard to do this right rather than, you know, make compromises and not actually deliver what we're expecting. Like you don't want this sooner without all the necessary parts to function. Uh, you rather have the real thing later. And I work on lots of projects as a blockchain developer that are a fraction of the size of Ethereum 2.0 in terms of complexity. And they're still incredibly hard to estimate the timelines for, all right? So uh, if you took that and scaled it out to the size of something like Ethereum 2.0 with lots of developers, a really big organization, it would be nearly impossible to predict the timeline with any degree of accuracy. So is Ethereum going to run out of money and basically lose all the funds that they need in order to pull this off? I hear people talking about this too. Well, I don't think so, and here's why. Um, some recent news came out that uh, the Ethereum Foundation sold 70,000 Ether basically at its all-time high. This would have basically been $100 million back in 2017, early 2018. So I don't exactly have you know full insight into the Ethereum Foundation's financials, but I have a hard time thinking they're going to blow through all that money just like that. Sure, they might consolidate and restructure somewhat internally inside the organization, but I have a feeling they have plenty of runway to accomplish what they need to, uh, at least their main priorities in the short and midterm. And so also, are people just like losing hope in blockchain? Are they getting impatient with uh, these long timelines, these delays that we keep hearing about? Um, well, I don't think so, right? I don't, I don't think everybody's just kind of like throwing their hands up in the air and, you know, abandoning blockchain. Sure, some bad projects are failing. Um, people who just want to make a quick buck, they're leaving the space. Um, but I keep seeing more cool projects pop up. We just had news recently that Nike uh, patents a system for tokenizing shoes on Ethereum. The fact that a big name like Nike is even associating itself with Ethereum is a big deal. And I've done other videos on my channel in the past about how, you know, other big names have also associated with Ethereum, like Google and Amazon, these big tech companies. And it's just a really big deal for a project like Ethereum. It boosts its credibility um, to see that these other uh, big companies, you know, are interested in it and believe in the technology itself. And I'm still seeing, you know, continued interest in uh, DeFi or decentralized finance. And you know, this is basically taking, um, existing financial products and porting them over to the blockchain and huge incentives here, right? Like basically you can earn higher interest rates, locking up money in smart contracts with cryptocurrency than you could uh, leaving them in your bank account, right? And in this bear market uh, for crypto traders right now, sometimes this is a, a good alternative for them too, rather than trying to trade um, and sh doing short and midterm trades, they can just lock their money into these DeFi projects and earn interest that way too. So, and also as a blockchain developer, you know, I'm still building projects, you know, companies are exploring blockchain technology all the time. Um, so I am optimistic about where this space is headed, especially for the long term. All right. So I hope you all liked that video. Again, if you want to become a blockchain developer, subscribe to the channel, click the like button down below. And my new program, Blockchain Master University, launches on January 29th, 2020. It's going to be a place where you can get real-time feedback and help to crush your goals as a blockchain developer. So click the link down below in the video description. There's a sign up uh, to join the special launch event. All right. Until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.